everyone. Welcome to the Wool and Spinning Podcast. This is episode 21, I think. Um, it might be 22. And I am actually just starting a leader on my Turkish spindle, so I'm just going to finish that. My name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. As you know, this podcast is sort of no longer a podcast, so these are sort of more like video logs. Um, as I sort of create my stuff and feel like I can update you guys on what's going on, um, I will have the odd episode come out, but they're not really um, going to be on a schedule and they're not going to be consistent. So for those who are expecting and hoping for a regular podcast and are hoping that this is going to be um that the podcast is back, that's not the case. So I'm sorry, <laughs> but I thought it was better to get um, this. I I just wanted, I had a lot to talk about and I was trying to write a blog post and I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a video log. So um, you can find me everywhere as Well for Pearls uh, and I blog over at wellforpearls.com and that's where I am most active and that is where if you wanna connect with me, it is probably the best place to find me. Um, as you know, the Woolen Spinning Podcast is on a hiatus, and I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. Um, in the past month, we've had kind of one thing after another, and it really solidified for me that I had done the right thing. So between a car accident, nobody was hurt. It was just a run-in with a boulder that um, ripped up our tire, um, and I had to have some dental surgery. The kids have been sick, they haven't been sleeping because they transitioned uh, into new beds. Nora was climbing out of her crib and we had to put her in her big girl bed, but then James saw it and he wanted one and we had two beds that were the same. So we transitioned him from his toddler bed into his big boy bed. Um, what else has happened? <laughs> I've been working a ton. Um, I'm actually heading to work this morning. So I'm sort of getting this. Um, I thought I re w would record before um, I headed to work only because um, Mike has taken the kids camping and uh, the house is quiet. I have beautiful light because it's supposed to be super hot this weekend. And um, <laughs> Go figure for the end of April and yeah I have lots to share with you so I'm just gonna jump right in um, I have been spindle spinning up a storm I have been working on which I share with you first back when I was sort of toying with the idea of maybe doing an Etsy shop I had made a whole bunch of punies on my blending board and actually I'm not gonna pull them out because um, they are sort of packaged um, in an effective way to be able to carry them around. Um, this was a braid originally of uh, West Coast Color and Carding um, BFL. And I had carded them, I had put, made all these punies, sorry, I'm out of practice. And I really didn't like spinning them on the wheel. So I pulled out my turtle made Turkish spindle. This is gonna fall apart and I started spinning them on here. So this is sort of my progress so far. This is, these spindles are called Turtle Maids. They're um, on Etsy and Jen is lovely to deal with and it's spinning up really quite nicely. Um, it drafts really beautifully. So um, if you check back on one of the old episodes, there is a um, how I spin punies. There's, um, I'll see if I can link it, but I'm there might not be show notes. I am making no promises. Um, but anyways, one of the old episodes, there's um, some information. So I am spinning those up. They're kind of my on the go project. I haven't worked on it very much. As you can see, it's just in the starting stages. I don't even think I've put that on Instagram. I'm not sure. Anyways, that's my first spindle spinning project. And then my other spindling project is actually twofold. I bought, and if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen these. I bought some Kapar spindles in the mediums. This is what the box looks like when you get them. They are from Winnipeg. And this one, the, they're on Etsy. Um, I think it's Ken is his name. Oh, Wayne and Kelly. So this is their card if you're interested. They're, um, yeah, they're on they're on Etsy. It's not on their card that they're on Etsy, but on the back, it gives you Etsy at Natural Knotwood. So I would highly recommend if you're a spindle spinner and you like Turkish spindles, I would highly recommend checking them out. This is my second turtle that I'm doing on this. So this is the second half of a one ounce bump of fiber. 
And if you follow me on Instagram and if you follow Fiber Fridays, you will have seen this um, because I've been taking pictures of it. So this is Sweet Georgie Yarns in the Phoenix Rising colorway. And you should see this little thing go. It is just awesome. I'll just get my fiber out of the way. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Really neat little spindles. So these are about 25 grams. And I have three more little bumps of fiber to do. And then I will put these aside. This is my first little turtle. And once I am done, I will set that aside. And this is part of this Sweet George Yarns Spinning Sock six pack. So I'm I'm actually copying Chrissy of the Snappy Stitches podcast, who's a dear friend of mine. I don't have it within reaching distance, but the Spinning Sock six pack comes with six different bumps of one ounce, what well, six different one ounce bumps of fiber, and it was part of the um, gift for Spinzilla in 2014. And this is my other one. So I bought two. I actually kind of wish I had bought three, but then my husband won't have anything to give me for my birthday. So um, so basically what I've done is, like I said, I'm copying Chrissy. Um, so she spun one of her, I think she's got two of these packs that she sort of had acquired. Um, I am going to take all of the hot colors and three ply them and all of the cold colors and three ply them. And then I'm going to do striping socks. So it'll be like a two or a four stripe repeat and this is my spindling bag <laughs> that I take everywhere and the only reason why I use this is because it's waterproof so if we're if it's in the bottom of the stroller and for some reason it gets wet on the outside um, it it's fine um, it was one of those bags that I had picked up at I think it was part of like a free gift or something at Michael's years ago and I found it when I was cleaning out my studio which is what I've been working on for the last month and um, I have like a little corner in our master bedroom that's sort of my office and um, I found it and I thought oh what a perfect spindling bag so I've been taking this with us everywhere so you'll have seen it on Instagram um, if you follow me. Um, what else am I working on? I have been working on some Icelandic which was a fiber club colorway in, from Spunky Eclectic when I was still a part of that club. I'm also spinning this on my Turtle Made spindle. This one I got at Fibers West and I absolutely, I think this might actually be my favorite one. I have quite a few now and um, this one's my favorite one. It was the first one I bought and I just, I just, I don't know, I just love it. So this is in the colorway Squirrel. This is Icelandic. Um, I've done my first turtle. This is 25 grams. And um, I've spun it a little bit thicker than I normally spin and the reason why is I'm kind of torn about maybe leaving it as singles or maybe doing a two ply and this was my sample. Let me see if I can. Um, this was my sample and it's a two ply and it's very low twist on the spindles and I really like it but I sort of thought if I want to knit mittens, it needs to be a little bit thicker. Or if I want to do, I can't wear Icelandic against my skin. It's it's probably one of the only wools that I really don't like against my skin. So I was thinking that I might do a toque, but do the band in a different wool. I have some leftover Shetland from my vest, which is right here. And I sort of thought about combining the two because I can wear the Shetland against my skin and doing the brim in the Shetland and then doing the Icelandic for the rest. So I don't know if I'm gonna leave it as a singles cause that would give me a lot of yardage and I don't really wanna do a shawl. So um, that's the tag. So it was in color, the colorway was called Squirrel. And she says it's perfect for socks or mittens. So actually the one thing I was thinking was maybe leaving it as a singles and doing socks and they would be like house socks. Um, and I could slightly fold them and they could actually be quite hard wearing. So I'm not sure. This was what the original fiber looked like. Um, these are totally my colors. Um, yellows and rusts and black and I just love them. And uh, I've 
divided it up into 25 grams so that's 50 grams but the other but I took 50 grams and I divided it in half and like I said this was the first bump and then this is the second 25 grams because it is very heavy so I didn't want to overload my spindle so I've broken it all down into little nests just to make it easier for spinning and when I started recording I was having some technical problems so I didn't know how long it would take I just started my my second turtle so I'll decide if I'm going to apply it or not. I don't know. One of the things that I've been doing while I've been spindle spinning is um, most spindlers wear on their wrists um, an elastic band or a hair tie or something. So my friend Diana came up with the ingenious idea of knitting wristlets or wristers to um, check the wear and tear of your yarns, but also to be able to secure your fiber um, underneath. So I've actually been doing that. And this is my Kramer Yarns Alpaca Wool Blend. It's a 70-30%. And I did a blog post on this to see, and I said that I would report back about the wear. It's definitely fuzzing up quite badly. It's stretched quite a bit. So when I first made it, it was snug around my wrist. And now I can pinch about an inch at the bottom. And so I have to wear it up quite a bit higher, which is actually fine for spindle spinning. And I think because I keep pushing it up, it, that's what stretched it. But even up here, it's a bit loose. Um, so I think when I actually go to do my sweater spin, which is actually on my match list right here, and I've already started it, when I go to ply it, I think I'm going to more tightly ply it. Because the spindle yarn, the spindle spun yarn, while absolutely beautiful, and it turned out, I just can't believe how well it turned out, and it's so consistent and bouncy and squishy, um, this will not last in a sweater if I want to knit something quite hard wearing. And I know what sweater I want to knit. It's an Anne Hansen pattern. I can't remember the name, and I'm not going to show it. James broke my tablet yesterday morning. It was totally an accident, but I have no more tablet. So, and we're torn about whether we should replace it or not, because I don't use it very much. So... Anyways, um, this, it would be great for a toque. Um, it would be beautiful for a cowl, but for a hard wearing sweater, based on how this is wearing, it's not gonna, it won't last. So I'm just gonna tighten up the, the ply twist when I finish the sweater spin. So I have about four, just shy of 400 grams left to spin. And that, like I said, is gonna be on my match list. And then I also have been swatching. This is a huge swatch in the Falkland. If you follow the blog, you will know that I have finished this sweater spin. And it was this yarn. I did a huge blog post about it. It's all done. I'm so happy. For those of you who have followed the podcast for a while, you'll know that I probably threw a little bit of a party when it finished. This was my West Coast Carding in Color Falkland. Um, it was drum carded. It was really nappy. Um, Anyways, I tried a couple of stitch patterns, and the one that I really liked in the end was this um, tool stitch, and it's a slipped stitch pattern, and it's going to be a bit hard to see, but it's um, got this slip stitches and um, yarn overs and stuff, and it's really pretty, and it doesn't contrast with the yarn. It just adds a bit, a bit of texture. So I think I have settled on the cardigan pattern that I'm going to do, and actually I will pull it up on my phone. So you can see, but I did do a little wrister of this yarn and it's fuzzing up quite a bit, but it's not getting all stretched out of shape. So um, I think what I'm going to do is originally I was going to knit the cardigan on five millimeter needles. And when I went to swatch again, this is the second swatch. I actually swatched on 4.5 millimeter needles um, to make a slightly denser fabric. And it actually turned out quite well. And I really like the color. From a distance, it's really pretty. So it, the lovely, um, all of the colors, like there is no brown in here. There is no brown. It's all red, yellow, blue, green. And of course you add all those colors, especially because they're very primary. Um, when you add all of them together, of course they make brown, which turned out really well. So up close, you can see all those different colors in there. But of course from a distance, it just looks brown, which you guys know how much I love brown. <laughs> so that is going to get cast on and I will show you the cardigan pattern that I chose. It's new. Um, it was just published by, um, oh, I have Icelandic in my tea. Lovely. Um,
Where are you? Mm. There it is. It's called Vermont. And I've got tea on my phone. So this is what it looks like. And this, the back of the cardigan is the actual tool stitch. So it's really pretty and I do have enough yardage for it. I haven't completely solidified what my yardage is, but it's um, it'll be enough. I might not be able to lengthen the cardigan very much, but I thought what I would do is knit the sleeves and then I'll just knit the body until I sort of get close to running out of yarn. And then all you have to add at the end is the button band and the collar at the top. So very straightforward. So those are in progress. And then the last thing that I've been working on, remember my succulent shawl? I have Icelandic in my mouth. Oh my goodness, that fiber. I don't love it. I'm not going to lie. I do not love it. Um, yeah, so remember my succulent shawl and I was really torn. Oh, I'm right in the middle of the row. Um, I haven't ripped it out, but I haven't been working on it. I actually did um, a gauge swatch. You guys know how much I love swatching, both sampling and swatching. And that's the knit stitch down there, just stocking that stitch. And then I did a twisted rib up here. And um, it's going to blow out because there's so much sun. Anyways, um, so this was Sweet Georgie Yarns Polworth and Silk that I over dyed. And um, I did the twisted rib and then and this was knit on 4.5 millimeter needles. And I've actually cast on for the featherweight cardigan. So I haven't, my the other ball of yarn is wound and in the succulent shawl currently. And I took the second skinny yarn because I have almost a thousand yards. Um, and I started the featherweight. So if I get to the bottom of the yoke and I divide for the yoke and I can put it on my dress form and have a really good look at it before I carry on, I'm using my 60 inch cable so that I can put it on my dress form to check it um, before I carry on. Um, I might rip the succulent shawl and just do the featherweight. And the reason for this is that I really, I stopped working on the succulent shawl and I kind of just burned out on it. I'm not feeling it. I have some other hand spun that I'm really wanting to try it as the succulent shawl instead. And I have so much yardage of this that I just thought like, why not do it as a sweater? Even though it's a lower twist yarn, um, cause it came off the Hanson balanced. And then when I washed it, it was slightly under twisted. And I wanted that cause I was going to do lace, but it's really making a lovely fabric and, um, it's quite even and it's quite consistent. And I really like what the increases are looking like. So I'm just going to see how this goes. It may get ripped out, but, um, I don't think so. I'm kind of really liking it. It's boring to knit, but I'm really liking it. This is like for the product for sure. Um, but I think I can push through and, and do that. So that is on my needles. And the last thing that I'm working on is on my drop spindle. This is a hound design, um, lace spindle. I think it's 20 grams. And actually funny, me and Chrissy are always doing the same things. Um, we are, it just so happens that we both were stash diving and we both, I guess we didn't talk about it. We just both started spinning up our uh, Merino flax silk blends from Hedgehog Fibers. So this was for me, this, the, this stuff was in my stash. It's been in my stash for about two and a half years. It was a club colorway from uh, Hedgehog Fibers. And unfortunately I have doubles because I'm not loving it. But I did do a little sample just to kind of see what it would come out as. And actually I really ended up quite liking the finished yarn. Um, flax is often left as a singles, but because it's mixed with the merino and the silk, um, I did do quite a tight two ply and I washed it and soaked it. Anybody who has anything like this in their stash, beware. All of the dye that sits on the flax, the acid dye, will come out in your um, when you're washing it. So the water when I was washing this was dark, like dark like this, dark, dark, dark blue. Um, and it's all from the flax because of course it doesn't take the dye the same. So it's very muddied, 
I'm I I think I'll probably chain ply this and it's not it didn't soften up like it's not nice and soft and bouncy and like it's quite stiff and it's quite um I don't know what it would be like next to the skin it's not unpleasant next to the skin it almost feels like um kind of feels like cotton like on a press shirt not not flannel that's soft but like a pressed shirt that's kind of what it feels like it's not unpleasant um so my thought is that to spin the rest of this up and i think i'll keep going on the spindle because it was quite lovely spinning it on the spindle um and the flax is not super clean and i think that's partly because of all the dye that's sitting on it this is what the top looks like so that's all of the flax in there and um it's very difficult to break it apart and it's um yeah it's really interesting stuff Chrissy's talked about it on her podcast too um I don't I don't love this I would never buy it again personally and I everybody likes different stuff and this is just not for me but I think I'll chain ply it I think to keep the colors clean and to keep all the colors lovely I'll chain ply it when I go to um finish it off so I think I'll use my steampunk spindle if if you haven't seen what a steampunk looks like, um, it looks like this. They're quite big. They hold four ounces of fiber. It's 35 grams. They're really super stinking cool. They're made by Schneider Spindles. The last time I checked, he actually didn't have any more in his shop because he sort of does like runs of stuff. So right now there's a lot of supported spindles, Russian spindles and some of his 3D printed spindles, I think. But if you really want a nice plying spindle, I would highly recommend um, recommend them. Because the nice thing is, because the bottom is sort of bowed out a little bit, um, it doesn't the fiber doesn't pop off the bottom as it gets really full. And you can run it down your leg and get it going like really fast. And you can get all that ply twist in there and it doesn't slow you down when you're plying. So you can get quite a long, um, length of fiber plied and by running it down your leg get it all plied up and then wind it on um, it's quite fast I was surprised um, I thought it would be a bit slower before I say goodbye um, and before I sign off um, I thought that I would just really quickly this is going to come live on the blog on Thursday I think May fourth May 5th so please 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 check the blog if you are interested sorry for the crinkling if you are really interested in turtle made and you've heard me talk about them and there's lots of people on Instagram who've talked about them there is going to be a giveaway on the blog for a micro gradient turtle made spindle so if you would like to win one of these check the blog in the next week or so, the, the giveaway will run for two weeks. And uh, this is one of her micro gradients. And they, it is just so super stinking cool. Um, so thank you to Jen for that. And you should see how quick this little thing goes. It's pretty neat. This will spin um, some really lovely, really lovely lace and sock yarn. So that will be popped in the mail for somebody um, the second Thursday of May 2016 sorry for the crinkling my mic is right here and I also got some stuff I went to Brooklyn Brothers which is a local to me um, spinning shop spinning and weaving and I actually bought some pulled sari silk I'm not sure if I'm going to card this up and make a blend or if I am going to uh, just spin it on its own it is so soft because of course it's silk um, but really beautiful colors and um, a whole bag of it and I think that like I said I'm kind of I'm I don't know if I'm gonna card it up or if I'm gonna keep it on its own this gold color I have some fiber in my stash that's that color and I was sort of thinking about doing some hand pulled roving I'm making sort of a Tweety yarn and the other thing that I recently acquired was two pounds Sorry for the tape. Of a local crossbreed sliver. 
And actually the reason why I wanted to get this is there's a cardigan by Anne Hansen again that I'd really like to spin for. And this was just so beautifully prepped that when I was looking at it in the shop, I just I just couldn't walk away. <laughs> so it's two, I do have two bags of this. I have two pounds and I'll have more than enough to make the cardigan because actually it's got a skirt, like it's quite long. Um, and just beautifully prepped. Brooklyn Brothers just recently upgraded their combing equipment, or sorry, their carding equipment. And they're just doing really beautiful stuff. So, I mean, really, for the price point, this is Canadian, so it's even less in US dollars. For $20 for a pound, um, you know, I got two pounds, so $40 plus a little bit of tax. And I'm gonna get a sweater out of it. You can't say no to that. And the kids were with me. I was actually picking up some Eucalyn uh, wool wash and um, I was um, standing there and <laughs> Nora comes tootling up and she pulls it off the shelf and she's like, brown. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've trained you well, kiddo. It was quite funny because she she really loves the bright colors and she was um, rooting through, um, they've got these, these big bins on the floor and she was rooting through it and finding stuff. and. She kept pulling out like the neon colors because Danielle dyes neons like nobody's business. She does a really good job. And um, Nora kept pulling out all these really bright colors. And then she sort of turned around and pulled this stuff off the shelf. And she, I think she'd seen me pick it up a couple of times. Um, so I just thought, you know, sort of a sign. So I did get two bags of that. And um, so in terms of my fiber diet for 2016, I'm kind of off the... I, I actually haven't been maintaining it. I haven't bought any fiber. That was the first fiber that I've bought since Fibers West, which actually I only bought at Fibers West. I only bought some stuff to card, like, well, you guys saw. Um, but I've actually not been really acquiring anything because I've got all these really big spins going on. Um, other than the Kramer Yarns, which is on the match list, I don't actually have anything actively on the wheel right now, although I am still working on my Pacific Spirit on the Lendrum. But I was teaching on the Lendrum, and so I wasn't using it um, to do any personal stuff. So now that I'm not going to be teaching throughout the summer, um, I thought that I would pull it back out and start working on that again. So that's the only thing that's up and coming that I need to get back to. I think that's it. That's all for today. Um, if you are interested in hearing more about my Shetland pommier vest, um, there is a blog post that went live on... May 2nd. Um, so head back to that. The blog post was called A Waltz. So if you're interested in reading about the vest and the modifications that I made, I added pockets. Um, please head over there. And I think that's it for today's log. Good to chat with you guys. Happy spinning and I will hopefully maybe chat with you soon. Bye.